are the omniscient one. You are omnipresent. You set the atmosphere and the depths of our souls today. You set the atmosphere and the depths of our hearts today. You, Father God, will renew our thoughts today. And we receive you, Father God. We receive your word, Lord Jesus. Your voice, Father God. Your voice is in our voice. We are one in you. When we speak, Father God, according to your word, is it not your voice inside of us? Are we not one in you, Lord? So when we speak, confess, declare, and proclaim in the name of Jesus, it's your voice, Lord, speaking through us. We praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. Raise your voice to saints, sing a new song, sing a new song, get lost in his presence, he's here. Oh, yes, God. Father, hallelujah, Father, hallelujah, Father, we establish the boundaries this morning, Father, we establish all the four corners, the north, the south, the east, and the west, as we come together, we establish a spiritual boundary, no weapon formed against us will prosper, we make our stand right here in this quadrant today, we bless this quadrant, we bless everyone living in this quadrant, Father, whether it be sinner or saint, Father, we release an anointing over this quadrant in the name of Jesus. We release an anointing. We release it. We release what's living in us. Silver and gold, I have none but what I do have, said Peter. We release that right now. We release it to every soul in this quadrant. We release a stirring to every soul in this quadrant. We release a stirring. We release a quickening. No one will understand, really. Many will not understand, but it's coming from this corner on Papert and St. Louis. We're releasing it right now. We're releasing it into this place. We're releasing it into this quadrant. We're releasing it into this community. We're releasing what we have right now. Let it go forth, Father. Let your word go forth. Let it go forth in the name of Jesus, Father. From McCart, Father, him peel all the way to 35, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray that your anointing begin to go strong, Father. I begin that we, we pray that we release, Father, all that have within us. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For we are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. We are the lion of the tribe of Judah. We are of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Father, I thank you, Lord. We are those lion cubs ready to bring forth praise. Hallelujah. For we are from that tribe, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that Judah means praise? Judah means praise. That's what Judah means. The name of Judah means praise. He is the lion of the tribe of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? We are of the tribe of praise. That's what we do. We honor God with our praising. Amen. We are of the tribe of praise. Act of the tribe that you're from. Amen. Bring forth praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring forth praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are the tribe of praise. Hallelujah. We are the tribe of praising people, Lord. We are a tribe of praising people, Lord. We are a tribe of praising people, Lord. Hallelujah. We bring forth praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our minds, Father God. We thank you for our hearts, Lord God. We thank you for our fingers, Father God. We thank you for our hands, Father God. We thank you for our knees, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our legs, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for our souls. We we thank you, Father God, for the hair on our heads. We thank you, Father God, that we can see in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for our nose. I thank you, Father God, that we can smell. I thank you, Father God, for the taste buds on our tongues. I thank you, Father God, when we eat food, that we can taste it, and it's pleasurable, and it's good. Every good gift comes from the Lord. I thank you, Father God, for our toes in the name of Jesus. I thank you for our kneecaps in the name of Jesus. I thank you for our ankles, Father God. I thank you for our elbows, Lord, that our arms can bend, Father God, that we can raise our hands to the heavens, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for our eyebrows. I thank you, Father God, for our eyelashes. I thank you, Father God, for every part. Wake up, saints. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Wake up, you dry bones. Wake up, you dry bones. Wake up in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that we are not dead. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us eternal life. I thank you, Father God, we have clothes on our backs today. I thank you, Father God, we have shoes on our feet. We have socks to warm our feet. I thank you, Lord, that we have food in our refrigerators at home. I thank you, Father God, we have running air conditioning. We have heat in our homes. I thank you, Father God, we have a toilet. We have a commode. I thank you, Father God, we have clean running water in our sinks, in our bathtubs, in our showers. I thank you, Father God, we have dishes. I thank you, Father God, we have clean cups at home. I thank you, Father God, we have running vehicles. I thank you, Father God, that we have money in our bank account. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we have gas in our cars. I thank you, Father God, that you have brought us here today. I thank you, Father God, for our children. I thank you for the child in Stephanie's womb. I thank you, Father God, that you are protecting her stomach in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for this consecrated ground. I thank you, Lord, for every pew bench. I thank you, Father God, for the praise and worship team. I thank you, Father God, for Renee. I thank you, Father God, for Diego. I thank you, Father God, for Evie. I thank you, Father God, for the people that are in the sound booth. I thank you, Father God, for Janine. I thank you, Father God, for Eric. I thank you, Father God, for her children. I thank you, Father God, for Sandra, Romero, Stephanie, and Matthew in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for Melissa and Sammy. I thank you, Father God, for Nicole. I thank you, Father God, for Nubia. I thank you, Father God, for Javier. I thank you, Father God, for Veronica Ponce in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for Victor in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for Alice. I thank you for Mama Alice. I thank you for Nina. 
I thank you for Tim, Isaiah, and Lucas. I thank you for Misa in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Chris in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for Sandra's grandkids in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for these four walls. I thank you, Father God, for the roof. I thank you, Lord, for the floor. I thank you, Father God, for the children's rooms. I thank you that we have bathrooms. I thank you, Father God, for all the instruments. I thank you, Lord, for the guitar and the piano and the drums in the microphones. I thank you, Lord, that you woke us up today to use these hands and feet for your glory. We don't got nothing to complain about. There are people that are stuck in wheelchairs. There are people that died today. There are people that lost their children. There are people that are dead. They are spiritually dead. And we are not. So what do we have to complain about? The Lord just absolutely nothing. We don't have anything in the name of Jesus. We lift up Ukraine, Father God. We lift up Russia in the name of Jesus. We lift up all the people, Father God, that are being martyred. We lift up people that are killing themselves that that demon of suicide will be bound and burned up and executed off of our children. In the name of Jesus, I buy molestation. Some of us were molested. We're not being molested no more. We're not being raped no more. We are not being abused no more. That is done. That is past. That is dead. That is the old sin nature. We are alive. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Raise your hands. Jump. God has given you feet. He has given you legs. Praise him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I bind a spirit of complaining. I bind ungratefulness in each and every one of our hearts. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We cast it back to the pits of hell. You will stay in the pits of hell in the name of Jesus. The whole kingdom of hell is defeated. The whole kingdom of hell is defeated. We're not living in the kingdom of hell. We're living in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of the Holy Ghost fire. The kingdom of heaven lives in us. God, you rule. You reign. Holy Ghost fire. Fire burn. Burn, 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 burn. Holy Ghost fire, burn. In the name of Jesus, burn. Break off every addiction. In the name of Jesus, break, break, break. Break, 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 break. Break their mindsets, Lord. Break the ungodly thoughts. Break the pretension, Father God. In the name of Jesus, get your minds right. Align our thoughts in the name of Jesus. Break, break, break. Crush this flesh. 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 All of you, Lord. All of you, Lord. All of you, Lord. Ignite the children. Ignite the children. Blow it up in here, Lord. Blow it up in the name of Jesus. Blow it up, Lord. Blow up our hearts, Father God. Fire burn, 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 burn in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, bind every demon spirit. Push back the gates of hell. Push back the gates of hell off our minds. Our minds will be sane and straight and sound. Our thoughts will align. Our thoughts in you, Lord. Your word, your word, your truth, your truth. In the name of Jesus, you're a liar, devil. You're a liar, devil. You're a liar, devil. You're always going to be a liar. But Father God, you're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. You reign, Lord. You, Father God, are mighty. You are the mightiest. John 1, 4, 4. You, are you not the greater one? 
living in us. You are the greater one living in us. No excuses. True salvation in the name of Jesus. Come on, say. Hallelujah. In the devotion, did it is, and did it is, and did it is, and did it is. In the devotion, did it is, and did it is, and did it is. Fire. Fire the Holy Ghost. Burn it, Father God. Burn up these demon spirits, Lord. In the devotion, in the devotion, did it is. Fire the Holy Ghost. Burn. Blow up. Blow it up, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God bless the praise and worship. for the Lord this morning. Who has come with an expectation this morning? You got to expect, y'all. Get that expectation up high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay standing. Stay expecting. Isaiah 62, 6 through 7 says, On your walls, O Jerusalem, we are spiritual Jerusalem, by the way. Yeah. That's a reason to rejoice right there if you didn't have one. <laughs> On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen all the day and all the night that they shall never be silenced. Hallelujah. Angels, armies have been charged on your behalf. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest. Not right now, not when you walk up in the house of God. No, 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 no. You don't take your rest. You praise him and you worship him. It says, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise on the earth. <laughs> you see, when we praise God with all of our hearts, we let loose and just let him do what he needs to do and we surrender ourselves and we become undone and fools in his presence it says that we're putting him to work because he wants to bless a people like that how many of y'all ready for the blessing this morning then give him some praise Hallelujah. Who's 
ready to worship this morning? Can I get an amen? Who's ready to worship? As you can see, I was just, I was just on the floor praising the Lord. All right? I needed some deliverance this morning, guys. I needed some deliverance. And the Lord delivered me. So who's ready to praise? I know everybody's ready to praise. Because we all need freedom. We all need to be joyful for everything that God has done for us. Because he is too good not to praise. He is too good not to be joyful. In the name of Jesus, thank you.
things in our lives. You continue to do great things.
will continue to make the way. I don't know where you are and and where you're standing in your life right now. He is a way maker (laughs) and a miracle maker. Like I said earlier, some of us are walking miracles. I know sometimes we pray for a miracle, but do we ever ask to be the miracle? Sometimes we have to be that example. Sometimes God has to use you so you can reach the others. For some of you who may or may not know, I was an atheist for 18 to 19 years. And only God was able to turn my life around. Only God was able to touch my heart. And trust me, many people came to me and I shut them down. At that point in my life, I found joy crushing their faith. That's how much of a dark place I was in. But then God spoke to me, and he made a way for me. Did I ever think I was going to stand up here and sing? Not in a million years. Never did I ever think I was going to be here leading worship for God. Never. Never. I don't have that experience like most musicians. Everything is self-taught, and I was taught by God. So what I'm about to sing, I want you guys to sing with me. Because he wants to touch you. He wants to use you. Because he is the way maker, and he is the miracle worker. Sing this with me. Way maker. Miracle worker, way make 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 miracle worker. 
I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. 
never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Come on! Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. We declare it this morning. Even when I don't see it, you're working.
righteous by you, Father. We get persecuted every day. But that makes us even stronger. When we persevere and face those trials head on, there's always a reward and there's always a blessing behind it. Remember, you guys are soldiers of God. You guys are warriors. You guys are standing in the front lines for his kingdom. Satan will lie. Satan will try to steal. <laughs> he tried to do that to me this morning. But you got to love it when God makes a way. You got to love it even when you feel low. He still is able to use you. There's hearts being mended. And there's lives turning around. continue to worship you, Father. We worship you wholeheartedly and full of spirit. Even though sometimes we might look silly, we're full of the Lord. We're full of joy. Church, as a family, you're not alone. You are not alone. We stand right here with you. are being incinerated as we speak. The Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving. Let the rivers of water flow out of your mouth. You guys are kings and queens. We stand on the rock of Jesus. We're not easily swayed. And we stand by faith. We stand by faith. You are so good, Father. Let us be filled with your love. Father, guide us. Let us stand triumphant. That we abide in your shadow. Father, remind us that we stand victorious is that we are the head, not the tail. Father, you remind Satan every day that he has no power. You strip his power. 
power away from them. And he belongs in the bottom of our foot. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Let us be like David and be reminded of all the trials that we have overcame because of him. Let us remember all the blessings that he has done for us. the flesh glory but let the spirit of God let Jesus Christ be glorified through us church God is no respecter of persons I left this church I was disobedient I went through a season of trouble because of my disobedience and the Lord decided to decided to bring me back after I rejected him after night after I turned away from him and I gotta tell you anything that you see is not us it's the spirit of God working through us and he will do the same thing for you. He will do, he's wanting to do the same thing for you if you open your heart up to him and you let him. I love how he works because the word says that a spirit man or a, or a son of God is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from and where it's going, but you can feel his presence. And he is here. I have, I have a couple of announcements to make before I forget it, before I get carried away. Uh, <laughs> but next week is time change. It's spring forward time change. So all of your watches, you can be seated. All of your clocks uh, are going to go forward one hour. So remember that Saturday night when you go to bed so that you can be here early still. Because we're going to lose an hour. We might be a little grumpy, but we got coffee, okay? We'll make sure we have coffee for you guys. Uh, <laughs> The second one, our children ministry and our youth ministry as well. Uh, we provide snacks for these kids. And I want to thank the people who have been given to that ministry to provide something for these kids to eat and something to drink while they're in class. But if you've been waiting for a sign from the Lord to know where to start giving and where to start partnership with them, well, here I am to invite you. To <laughs> this is your sign right here. So invite you to start, uh, that's a good way for you to start planting into the kingdom of God by giving to the kids. You can, you can either, when you put your tithe, you can put in there a little bit of extra money and just put in there that is for the children's ministry. Or you can actually go to Sam's Club, Costco, uh, and buy the individual package of like golfers, Cheez-Its, the, the juices as well. And I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. But... Um, that's a, that's a good way, and we really appreciate, and we love all of you. Appreciate all the effort that you guys 
that you guys put into this because I guarantee you this is a hundredfold church. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. Your life will be blessed when you start giving into the work in the kingdom of God. In him, he said, the word says that you, he will not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. And when you sow into his kingdom, to further his kingdom, I guarantee you he will give you more seed for you to sow even more. Open your, open, open your hearts to that because the Lord is faithful. And that's why I want to share with you today, guys. I have the honor of praying over the tithe. And I want to share with you from Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. And there's some weird words in here that I don't really know how to pronounce, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> After his return the, from the defeat of Shedor Laomer and the kings who were, who were with him. We got past that? Good. Uh, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, also known as king of peace. Does that remind you of anybody? Jesus Christ, prince of peace. Brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And he blessed them and said, this is Melchizedek talking to Abraham after Abraham defeated all his enemies in battle. He says, blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Do you guys realize that we have the promise of Abraham over us? He just told him, possessor of heaven and earth. Do you want your part of earth? He just promised you heaven. And he says, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Who in here is battling something right now? And you don't have to raise hands. Do you know if you're going through something or have just gone through something or are about to go through something? It says, he has delivered your enemies unto your hands. In other words, in other words, victory is already yours. Your enemies are defeated. That's, that's a shouting moment, guys. That's a shouting moment. And watch this. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys. The, the Old Testament wasn't even written yet. Abraham is the father of faith. And who in here knows that faith pleases God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham did not have the Ten Commandments. So everything that Abraham did, he did it out of faith. He tithed out of faith, out of his covenant with God. So I'm inviting you today to step out in faith and get in covenant with God by his love, by him delivering the enemies already unto you, by him already giving you the promises of possessors of heaven and earth. That's your promise. That's your promise, church. So I want to bless every single one of you with the opportunity to get in covenant with God by bringing forth the tithe. And if you can bring, if you guys can come forward, please. This is, this is real, guys. This is real. The tithe has so many blessings for you. It unlocks the windows of heaven. And God will pour you out a blessing that you will not have enough room to receive it. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be called your children, Lord. You called us out from, the, from where we were, Lord. Maybe in the down low, maybe depression, maybe drugs, maybe alcohol, maybe prostitution, maybe abuse. You called us out, Lord. And if you look around here, there's a, a, a church full filled with imperfect people, but chasing after your pef, perfect will, Lord, in unity and harmony by your Holy Ghost, Lord. And that's who you made us. This is the body of Christ, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We bless this tithe, Lord. We bless this, Lord. We're a hundredfold church, and we're given on to your ministry, Lord. And we declare, Lord, that those who trust in you, Lord, will receive a hundredfold blessing, Lord, because your kingdom will be expanded from the seed they're sowing in this very day. They will bring, they will bring, it will bring a harvest that they will not have enough room to receive it. They will have to get a bigger house. They will have to get a better car because of your blessing, Lord. It will overflow. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church says? Amen. Amen. God bless you all.
we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for lavishing us with your love and your presence today, this hour. Thank you, Lord. We don't have any wants or lack in our Lord. You can find everything that you lack in his presence. How many are enjoying his presence? How many of y'all felt something this morning? How many of y'all caught something good before you leave? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give honor to the man of God and the word that's about to be presented. I'll give him the most honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this beautiful man of God, Lord. I thank you for the anointing on his life, Lord. I thank you for his devotion, his dedication, Lord. I thank you that he no longer lives, but Christ lives in him. And we are partakers of that living. We're partakers of his death and resurrection, Lord. So I thank you for the many waters, Father, that spew out of this man, Father, over and over and over again. And I thank you that we get to drink from that fountain. We get to drink from that well. And we get to draw out what you've put in for us, Lord. It says in your word in the Old Testament, Father, that you have made shepherds that are after your heart. We, we have one of those shepherds in this house. We have one of those shepherds that are after your heart. And God, we're thankful, Lord. We are so grateful, Father, for the beautiful plates of your word that he gives. Fill them up once again, Lord. Fill them up once again. Stretch out your hands. Fill them up. So he can overflow on you, saints. Hallelujah. Fill him up once again, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And bless him, Father God. Bless him over and Hallelujah. over and over and over again. Hallelujah. 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 There it goes. Y'all are sending it forth. Hallelujah. Thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We make way for the word of God in our hearts. We make way for the man of God in our minds. And everybody that agrees with me says, Amen. 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 Children, you are dismissed to your classes. 18 and under, we have a youth class. Y'all go to your classes. We have our toddlers and we have our children's class. Everybody go to classes. Man, I feel like everything we do today, just the Holy Spirit's just going to be right there with us. Amen. I mean, these are those special moments. It don't always feel, you don't always feel the Holy Spirit always there, you know? That's not, anybody ever gone through that where you just feel like you don't feel God at all? Amen? These are special moments. We have to cherish these moments. Amen? We got to hang on to these moments because tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, there will be dry times. The world will come against you. It always does. And you're going to need to remember. You know that the Bible talks about remember. Amen? You got to remember. Like uh, whenever you do the cup and the bread, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So that's what we're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We got some hallelujahs in here. Amen. Look, she's just looking at me over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's our future. Amen. We got to bless our babies. Amen. Father, I thank you, Father, today for the word of God, Lord. Thank you for worship, Father. Something that came out of my mouth and uh, out of my belly, really, in the, in the prayer this morning was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Do you know that Judah means praise? That's what Judah means. We are of the tribe of praise. Amen? That's, we are of the tribe of praise. That's the kind of people we are. Praise be always on our tongue. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that that release happened today, Lord. I've already seen it today, Father, and I know that you're going to guide us through your word of God as we learn to drink from the milk of the word of God, Father, so that we can grow and grow ye thereby, is the way it says, Father, so that we can mature in the word of God, Father, and continue on drinking of this milk until one day we're finally ready for some meat, Lord, and I believe we're headed there. I believe some people here are hungry for the meat of the word of God. It comes a time when babies no longer drink milk anymore, but they got to drink, uh, eat hard food. So, Father, I pray that that hard food of revelation begin to come to us as a church, Father, so that we can grow you thereby, we can mature as Christians. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people say, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. This is where I left off last week, and I'm just going to continue on with chapter 2. And uh, we're going to look there in verse 1. And we're going to, the reason why I've been going over 1 Peter is because the whole book of Peter is about suffering and glory. In other words, you've got to go through some suffering before you go through some glory. You've got to go through some issues before you can mature. You've got to learn to win some battles all by yourself so that when you come to victory, you can really appreciate it. Amen? I have times where people have won battles for me, and I'm thankful. But a little part of me isn't just fully happy because I didn't win it good. You know what I mean? And then there are times when you yourself will be led to pray through and stand on something. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to waver, Lord. This too shall pass. I'm not going to go anywhere. And all of a sudden it goes by and you say, hallelujah, I did it. I got through it. Amen. It's always sweeter the victory with that type of thing. Amen. And I want to teach you in these past couple of weeks, we've been having to teach you that coming to Jesus or coming to the life of Jesus does not mean that things are going to go great and awesome all the time. Amen. Jesus isn't looking for those kind of people that don't know how to stand up and put a good fight. Amen. Some of you are from the streets. Y'all been around this hood. You know what it, you, you know what it means to stand up. Sometimes you just got to stand. Ain't nowhere else to run. Amen. You ever seen that on these loose dogs around here? They all scared, but all of a sudden when you put them up against the wall, well, they'll, they'll bite you. You understand? And we have to be like that. Christians have to be like that. There's got to be a point where you're finally up. You know what? There's nowhere else to run. I can't go anywhere else. I have to go to the Father, and I got to learn to pull out my sword, and I got to look at that mountain and say, be removed in the name of Jesus, you know? And those kind of victories are so much sweeter because you grow, you mature, and that's what the Word of God does. Let's go to chapter, verse, uh, chapter 2 of First Peter. We're going to read in verse 1. If you're there, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm reading out of the NIV. I'm reading out of the NIV, so I'm just going to go ahead and read, and you can catch up with me. It says, therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. We want to get rid of all that stuff. We want to get rid of all that stuff. That has to come first, amen? You got to get rid of the way your mouth used to talk before Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah, you got to get rid of all that because deceit, malice, slander, it all starts with the tongue, doesn't it? Hypocrisy, it all starts with the tongue. Matter of fact, James says, oh, how the tongue can start a, just a little bitty kindling can start a whole war, you know, the whole wildfire. I mean, a whole forest can go down all because of some wrong words that you spoke. Anybody ever been through that? Man, I'll tell you what, I have seen families broken apart because of the wrong words. The wrong thing was said. It was said in a malice way or a deceitful way. It was said in hypocrisy. In other words, it was said in a way that when somebody said it, everyone looked and said, well, you're not living it, and you're telling us to be that way, and you ain't even being that. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So when you hear those kinds of things, it creates a separation, amen? We don't want to be that. We want to be of the kind that are mature, that know how to bridle the tongue, we got to know how to bridle the tongue. We got to know how to be like one of those horses, re good bridle, get that me metal, you know, you know? And, and when it pulls left, you go left. And when it pulls right, you go right. Does that make sense? We want to be like that with the word of God. We want to be led by the spirit of God. If you know that you shouldn't be saying something, you'll feel that little stop on you, won't you? You ever done that before? And have you, any of you ever been like me and just said, I don't care, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> You ever done that before? Doesn't it feel terrible afterward? Because you know it was disobedience. And you know our spirits are called to obedience. That's what we want to do. We just want to obey God. Don't we all just want to be good and obey God? That's what we want to do, amen? Our spirits want to do right. But this flesh, it just keep going that way, but our spirits want to do right, right? That's the walk of maturity, amen? Constantly battling that very thing. Look what it says in verse 2. It says, be like newborn babies. Remember Jesus said you got to be born again? So you have now the New Testament. Someone that heard Jesus said, look, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk. You need to crave that. There are some of you that are starting to get the taste and the craving of a move of God. That's why you keep coming here. 
because you sense and you have tasted that God is moving here in this place. Amen? We may not be full all the way from end to end, but God is here, isn't he? And he's doing something. You see, God doesn't work with large numbers all the time. He doesn't always do that. Sometimes he likes to bring it down to the only few faithful ones and say, all right, I can do something with these people. Does that make sense? And that's what he's looking for, for faithful people that are starting to have a little bit of a crave, a little bit of a, a draw to want to know more about Jesus. And it takes spiritual words to understand these things. Here are some spiritual words that you need to know. You're not saved by the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments isn't what's saving you. The Ten Commandments is what's judging you. But thank God Jesus came to fulfill those Ten Commandments so that you can walk free of the Ten Commandments so that you can honor God by believing in the Son, Jesus Christ, and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That is what it's all about. That's the gospel. But so many of us are trying, God, I'm trying to live, I'm trying to live, I'm trying to live. Stop trying to do that. Honor God and his son. Walk in freedom and you'll see how the Holy Spirit every day, little by little, his spirit's going to start cleansing you. Amen? And there's going to be things that you don't do anymore. You just don't do anymore. You know, we don't do that. We used to do that, but we just don't do that anymore. You got to let the Holy Spirit begin to change that in you. Because if you try to change, it's just going to be like the last times that you tried to change. Was there any change? No. No. We need the Holy Spirit to take us and just from the inside begin to say, you know what, I just don't, do, I just don't feel like that anymore, babe. You know what, I just don't feel like bringing them around anymore. I don't know. There's something about it. Every time we used to be cool, but now it just don't work out anymore, you know. And it's those types of changes. It says, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your what? salvation you see so that means just getting saved is not enough babies can be led astray i mean babies will know their parents but if you separate them from their parents they're going to look and draw to something they know they know better they know that they can't just be alone you understand and where that baby ends up that's that that can be a tragedy or it can be a beautiful thing you understand when you're babies in Christ, you have to look and be with people that have also understood your walk and are walking at your understanding of faith also. We have to be like-minded, like faith. If you go to the wrong church, you'll feel it. Did you know that there's a wrong church for you? Yeah, and I'm not saying it's a bad church either. I mean, it could be a church moving and doing their thing. I mean, they're praising the Lord, honoring God, but there you are sitting there, realize, what am I doing here? I ain't feeling nothing here. Because there is a church that's just right for you. You understand? And you'd be surprised that as you go more mature, as you begin to go more into the meat of God, how the church or the people around you begin to not look like everybody. You understand? If you stay on surface level of Jesus, you're going to see more people there in that area. But the more you go inner and the more you get closer to God, it gets fewer and they look weirder and weirder to the world. Amen? Oh, I promise you. That's why some of you, when you first came in, you're like, oh, man, that's too much. You know what I mean? That's because the Lord is bringing you in closer. Yeah? Man, there. I mean, there, yeah, yeah, there you go, amen. It does, it gets a little bit more crazier, and not, not crazier when I mean out of control. There's more control, but it's going to cause you to go more into faith, amen? See, this church is always going to push you into faith, to praise a little bit more by faith, to pray a little bit more by faith. Do you understand? Just when you think you pray good, you're going to come to IBC and realize, oh, I don't pray like that. Now, all I want you to do is don't make up some weird doctrine and say, well, they praise like that, and I'll pray like, don't do that weird stuff, because it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It says, lift up holy hands to the Lord. Amen? So if you're one of those that the devil wants to keep your hands down, man, force them. Ah, let me get up. Do it by faith. Amen? It honors God when you kill the flesh. It honors God. 
the Lord sees it and he says, yeah, 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 that's what I want. And I'm like, I don't feel it, but my hands are high, Lord, for you. Does that make sense? And God sees that and he honors it and he'll honor your life just by breaking a little bit of flesh. You understand? I mean, whenever you feel the flesh saying, don't speak, just go ahead and talk. Whenever you feel the flesh saying, don't talk to them, just go ahead and talk to them. You understand? Just say something. You got to give, you got to beat that flesh. Because I promise when you're in the malls and when you're in Walmart, it's a little bit different. You know you're supposed to say something. You know you're supposed to buy that person that thing. But there you are questioning yourself. You got to get out of your flesh. Every time you kill the flesh in a moment, it's honoring God. And those things add up and they build treasures for you. You understand that? Oh, man, they go so far. They go so far. It says you got to grow up in your salvation. That's what we're talking about. We all want to grow up. We don't want to be the same. And that's what's happening to you all. It says grow up in your salvation. Verse 3, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. How many of you have tasted the Lord today? Amen? Amen. Yeah, there's something right. It was something, wasn't it? There was a taste. And I'm not talking about on your tongue, but I'm talking about you tasted the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about where was the last time you got that? Amen. Sometimes it's, it's hard to find that nowadays because churches are they just want to be politically correct. They want to look right. They want to they're saying, well, if you keep a sermon of 30 minutes, you'll have more people. Yeah, but they're going to be lost and they're going to be babies. You understand? You got to learn to build people up to have longevity with God. Amen. You got to learn how to pray past five, ten minutes. You got to have longevity with the Lord. Does that make sense? God bless you, sister. Does that make sense? You got to learn to stand in it. I promise your flesh ain't going to want to pray but a minute or two, much less 30 minutes, much less an hour. Amen. If y'all were with us this morning, we prayed 45 minutes right there. We started at 1015. Amen. And for those of you that stood the test and lasted, you got something today. Amen. I'm telling you right now, there's longevity. The flesh won't want to, but it's just awesome when you take it a little bit farther just to kill the flesh. Whenever you feel yourself wanting to stop praying because you don't know what to say, man, just make something up and say something to Scripture just to go past the flesh a little bit. Amen? Does that make sense? The more you kill the flesh, the weaker the flesh gets. Amen? And the more you walk in humility. That's what's calling growing up in the Lord and actually tasting the Lord. Amen? Going past with where you know your line is. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 4. As you come to him, all right, so as you come to the Lord, watch this, the living stone, that's his name. The Lord is called the living stone. Oh, by the way, he was rejected by men, it says. So as you come to him, the living stone, the one that you're honoring this morning, he was rejected by men, but chosen by God and is precious to the Father. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? He's very precious. He's got a calling on him, Jesus, your Savior, that is rejected by men, but precious to God. This is your life. This is the call on your life. From here on out, you will be rejected by some men, but you will be precious to God. You understand? Oh, this is your call over your life. It says, but chosen by God and precious to him, verse 5, you also, I told you, you also, so just like you called by God, rejected by man, but precious to God, but you also are like living stones. In other words, you got to look into that and say, I am going to be rejected by the world, but in God's eyes, I will be precious. I mean, rejected by the world but precious to God. you got to get this mindset in you. This is on the way to maturity because now you're no longer worrying about, well, what are they going to think about me when I talk to them? Now you're just concerned about, you know what? I'm awesome. I'm just looking precious in the Lord's sight right now, me trying to get this word out to this person I don't even know. There are times where I'm telling you right now, whenever I'm ministering out there and, and I'm just in a Walmart or somewhere and I find somebody and I can tell, man, you want me to talk to them, I mean, it's nothing like what I'm talking to you now. You know, I'm not trying to give the best words of preaching. No, I'm living life with them. You understand? You know, you got to live life with them. Find life. You know how to talk to people. Find the open door. 
you know, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? God bless you. Do you need something? And, and I saw you over here, you know, and, 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 and do you need anything? And, man, you know what? I can help you out, man. Let me pray for you. I can help. See, just open up a little door. Live life with them. Spend about a, a, a couple of minutes with them. You understand? It breaks your flesh. It's on the way to being precious with the Lord because the rest of the world is going to look at you walking by and, oh, Lord, there's one of them holy rollers again. You know what I mean? I mean, we were doing it uh, uh, at the hospital. Uh, we, we were with a family member at the hospital, and, and uh, we were there. All of a sudden, the spirit just broke out, and there we were just praying, praying over people. People were getting the Lord, and I'm telling you, some people were stopping, but others were going like this. You understand? Do you know how that feels to my flesh? I feel embarrassed. I mean, there I am praying in the spirit, and I see what they're doing, and I get embarrassed. That's because my flesh is always going to do that. I go by, and my flesh says, boy, you look, you look, look at that face. Look at the way they're looking at you. My flesh says that. My flesh ain't no different from your flesh. You understand? I mean, it, it, it's going to say that same thing. It's not going to feel comfortable. A lot of us say, you know, well, that's the devil. Well, I'm telling you, sometimes it's just the good old flesh. <laughs> sometimes the devil ain't got to do nothing. Your flesh is enough of your enemy. You know what I mean? That's why we don't walk by the flesh. We walk by the spirit, it says. So what am I doing? Yeah, my flesh is embarrassed. Yes, I'm embarrassed that they're looking at me, but I'm pressing in and praying in any way. Even embarrassed and all, I'm still praying. And they walk by and thank God they walk faster. You get them out of here, Lord. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You got to press through. This is the way to maturity. The more you kill your flesh, the more that the Lord will honor you in your life. Because Jesus killed his flesh for your honor and your glory. It pleases the Father to see that rerun in your life. Put yourself on the cross, let someone else be glorified. Put yourself on the cross, let someone else be glorified. Oh, that honors the Father. Hallelujah. Kill the flesh, honor somebody else. Kill the flesh, bless somebody else. It's the way of Jesus. Rejected by men, precious to God. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Verse 5. You also are like living stones and are beings built into a spiritual house to be a what? Holy priesthood. So you're a priesthood. Say that with me. I am a priest. Yeah, you don't have to wear the little white thing right here. You know, you don't have to put the black robe because you, some of you are saying, well, I ain't no priest. There you are. You are a priest. You are a priest. You don't have to wear the black robe with the little white thing right here, okay? You don't have to do that. You are a priesthood. You are a priesthood. You are a priesthood. Matter of fact, all of us together as living stones, we form a temple. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, we're all different living stones, right? It said that, right? Rejected by man, well, we're rejected by the world. I'm going to come to y'all. You know what I mean? And when we come together, we start to form a spiritual temple. And guess what the Holy Spirit loves to do with his temples? He abides in them. Doesn't he? That means when we get together, we form a spiritual temple, and Holy Ghost says, there's my house. And he abides. He lives in it. He abides in the praises of his people. Did you know that? He abides in the praise. That's why we're always encouraging. Say hallelujah. Say because the Lord abides in the praises of his people. The more you raise up that, that tone and that volume and the more you get into the praising. Because praising is not just ad ad admonishing. Praising is when you got a, a loud shout. You know, you praise God. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? When you got that on your tongue, the Lord loves to hear it and he abides in it. All of a sudden he begins to move in it. Amen. That's why we're shouters. That's why you call us holy rollers, whatever you want to call us. You know what I mean? Man, they're the ones that shout and yelling all the time. That's right, because he abides in the shout and in the yell. The shout of the king is among us, the psalm says. The shout of the king is among us. The shout of the king is among us. You see what I'm saying? You've got to learn to do that, learn to get that out. It's, in, it's, it's moving into your priestly duty. Your priestly duty as a Christian, as a priest of Jesus is to have praise on your tongue. It says we're a holy priesthood, watch this, offering spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Man, hallelujah. 
spiritual sacrifices. You better tell you the number one spiritual sacrifice that you can give is the giving up of your flesh. That's the number one thing. Giving up of your flesh. That is a spiritual sacrifice. We were here on Wednesday and we were talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is spiritual. You, some of you are, man, I just want to walk spiritually. Forgive and love. You're walking in a spirit realm there. Because you, by your own nature, you cannot forgive people. You have to be led by the spirit to say, I conquer this flesh. I forgive him or her for what they said about me. I forgive them by faith. And the devil's going to say, yeah, well, you ain't feeling it. I don't walk by feelings. I walk by faith. And he said, yeah, but you still feel it. I don't care. I walk by faith. Faith honors God. By faith. By faith. Amen. And what do I do? I'm going to start acting by faith. You know? And when I see that person, God bless you. And inside my flesh is going to go. Uh, uh. <laughs> but I'm going to say, no, no, by faith, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I'm going to kill my faith. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Go buy them lunch. I don't know. And you know what I mean? Kill the flesh. It honors God to do that. Those are spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 6. For in the scripture it says, let's see what scripture says in the Old Testament. You see, I lay a stone in Zion, which is a spiritual house, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Man, highlight that scripture. Highlight that scripture. If you trust in Jesus, you will never be put to shame. I mean, I don't know how many times going through the battle, it looked like I lost. And it was an embarrassing moment there. But I hung on to my faith. It worked out for the good of, for me. And then I was not in shame. Do you understand? You'll never be put to shame. I'm not saying your flesh won't ever be embarrassed. Your flesh is going to get embarrassed. Because God has a way of working with the underdog. You know what I'm talking about? I feel like I've been an underdog all my life. Anybody ever had that? They thought you weren't going to do good, and then all of a sudden you came out on top, and you're like, yeah, I told you. <laughs> you know? Y'all are underdogs, aren't y'all? <laughs> yeah, I know y'all are. Y'all must be, because y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, Lord, the Lord, it says the Lord calls, calls the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Hey, we was fools at one time, weren't we? <laughs> but he's changed us. He's changed us. We know, we know what it means to be out there in the nitty-gritty. We understand what it comes to change, uh, make a change in our lives, give up of the things, you know what I mean? We know what that feels like, and the Lord will do something with your life. He'll, when everyone else thinks, nah, ain't no way they can do that, no way. They got to be of this family, they got to be making this kind of money, they got to be, you know, whatever the world says about that, ain't no way they can live in victory like that. And you just got to say, watch, I will not be put to shame. I will not be put to shame. Do you understand that? Verse 7. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become now the capstone. You know, in building, a capstone is that little corner piece. You ever seen, or it's called a cornerstone also. You ever seen that little piece in the corner and, and you know, it has all the memories of it and all that? You know, in theory, the way that works and the way it's told is if you remove that, the whole building falls. You ever heard anything like that before? You know what I mean? That's what Jesus is, the cornerstone. In other words, to the people that don't believe, he's that very thing. Oh, okay, you rejected him? Your whole world falls for him. That makes sense? But look what it says here. To the builder, the, one, the builders rejected has become the capstone and the stone that causes the stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. So to some of us, he's a blessing, and to others, he's a stumbling block. I declare that anybody who's coming against you or your family, there will be a stumbling block. They won't be able to touch you, amen? Because you're walking on the right side of Jesus, amen? Whatever weapon formed against you will not prosper. You will not be put to shame. 
I know some of you, your families are saying, what are you doing? Wow, this is looking different. Oh, y'all ain't doing that no more. Why don't y'all do that no more? You, your family, you're supposed to come with a family. You're rejecting the family. You're leaving. I promise you, you will not be put to shame. They're going to be looking at it, judging you, saying, you act different. You don't act the same no more. How's God going to lead you to be different? How's God going to lead you to act different? You stand. You stand in your decision. Amen. You will not be put to shame. I promise you. I promise you. You won't be put to shame. All of a sudden, when you're walking in blessing, you're going to say, I told you. Why don't you come on? I got a great church for you. It'll kill the flesh right off the bat. Amen. I'm telling you, the first service you come in, either you're going to run out or you're going to accept the Lord. Amen? That's the way it is. There's no time for these wishy-washies. I don't got time for wishy-washies in my church. You know what I mean? I don't got time for that. The Lord ain't looking for that. He's looking for people that are ready to make a decision and ready to move on and move forward. I want those kind of people on my team. I'll tell you that right now. I need those kind of people. Don't you remember that when you were in grade school? I choose you. I choose you. We always wanted to be the first one so we could choose the, the, the good ones, right? <laughs> oh, he got the good one. Oh, man, I'll, I'll take you then. You know what I mean? My <laughs> oh, gosh, it's like that. It's like that. There's some of you that maybe I wasn't took in the beginning, but I'll take you now. You know? <laughs> I can tell. You're changing. You're maturing. You're turning into something, a force for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Golly. Speaking truth. Amen. Golly. Watch this. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they are destined for. Verse 9. But you, say but you. God, look for the buts in the Bible. But you are a chosen people. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. That's right. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Amen. Say, I'm a, I'm a priest. That's right. You got to keep saying that till you believe it. Amen. You believe it. You know, when you're really going to walk in faith, you're going to tell a, a Catholic priest, I'm a priest too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a priest. Man. When you can say that, you have conquered that scripture, all right? I'm giving you a line right there. When you can walk up to a Catholic priest and say, I am a priest also, you have conquered that scripture, all right? <laughs> I'm telling you right now. It's going to be hard. Your flesh ain't going to want to do it. Watch. I don't <laughs> it says, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. When you come to the Lord, you have to be willing to step into the light. You understand? Light will expose, but you have to be ready to say there are some things that will be exposed in my life. But if I just get past this little season, it will be forgotten about and I will have conquered it. You understand? It's a little embarrassing when you come into the light because you're like, oh, Lord, I see everything. You know what I mean? I remember when my wife first found out, she was just my girlfriend at the time, when she found out that I was wearing contacts, you know? And oh, actually, she found out that I was supposed to be wearing glasses, but I had broke them and I didn't have contacts or nothing. And she found out in the... And then I told her, hey, I got money. I need to get glasses. You wear glasses? I said, yeah, 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 I wear glasses. She goes, can you see me now? I'm like, girl, you're kind of hazy. She goes, oh, Lord. <laughs> I remember I came out of the eye doctor. My wife had makeup and everything. and it go <laughs> She was afraid I, had, I hadn't seen the real her yet, you know? And I remember she told me that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But he calls you into the wonderful light, amen? It exposes. That's what I was trying to say. Jesus will expose some things, but it's for your good. It's for your good. Some of you may be smokers. That's got to get exposed. I'm a smoker. I'm dealing with, sm with smoking. I'm dealing with cigarettes. I'm dealing with this issue. You, the more you expose it, the more that little devil's going to be like, ah, damn, he told everybody. <laughs> you understand? It's something about killing the flesh, you know? There's something about it. When you, when you confess it, you confess things. Look, I got an issue with this. I'm just going to say it. I got an issue with this. You understand? And this, it's killing that flesh because the more you hide it in your secret, the more you hide it in the closet, the less God, God can do anything and nobody can do anything about that. Does that make sense? You got to come into his wonderful light and light exposes darkness. I promise you, you won't be judged here in this church because we come from the same dark as you. I've done it too. 
I mean, I've done it too. Between me and my wife and Kim, probably we've done everything. You know? <laughs> I'm telling you, we've been, we've been through everything. I say that with Kim because she's told me that. You know what I mean? You know? I'm not just picking on her. I'm telling you right now, there's something beautiful about just getting it off your shoulders and saying, I have this problem. And it gets out there, and then you're like, well, everybody knows. Oh, well, Father, I worship you. You know what I mean? Help me, Lord. Help me. I feel alone right now. You know what I mean? And you'll do that. You'll learn to walk on your own faith with Jesus. Amen. Verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received the mercy, but now you have received the mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Did you notice that it didn't say war against your spirit? You have the Holy Spirit in you. It's not warring against the spirit. It lost that battle 2,000 years ago. Man, did y'all grab that? Yeah. It can't war against your spirit. Your spirit is unbreakable. It's forever. It's everlasting eternal your spirit a new creation Kim said it this morning you are born again a new creation the old is gone the new has come the old is gone you have to understand that you are a three part being you are a spirit with a soul and you live in a body one day you'll get a new body and one day your, your soul will be totally generated from hurts of your past and you'll be just spirit hallelujah you understand that Okay, so that means you got to learn to identify it's my soul that needs changing. The renewing of the mind, the mind, the feelings, the emotions, that's the soulish realm. You you understand? The enemy wants to war against your mind, your will, and your emotions. He can't touch your spirit. Like I said, that defeated him a long time ago because your spirit is now with the Holy Spirit. It has now become one. Amen? It can't, can't touch that type of thing. It knows that. But your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Oh, how the enemy loves to work with emotions. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, emotions will rock your world. Emotions are crazy. You know, it says don't follow the, you know, the heart, the human heart is wicked. I remember I was at a time where I loved both of them. I love her, but I love her too. The Lord's like, oh, Lord, you know. Can I have them both, Lord? Oh, gosh. I'm telling you, it gets weird in the soul. I mean, you love all kinds of things that ain't good for you. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be honest. I'm honest with you. I'm being open with you. I mean, that's just the way the soul does. It can't be trusted. You got to trust what the word of God is because that matches what's in your spirit realm. Amen? The The war is not against your spirit. It gets your soul. Your soul is still the ticker of like, man, am I going to go this way or am I going to go this way? Does that make sense? So the enemy knows exactly where to trigger. He knows exactly where to to start working at. Amen? He's going to work in your mind. He's going to work with your will. And he's going to try to work against with your emotions. Get you up and down. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where am I? Verse 11. Amen. Dear friends. Okay, verse 12. Live such good lives among the pagans. That's unbelievable. That's the other, that's the rest of your family. (laughs) That's the ones that are giving you a hard time, you know. They don't know why you you all of a sudden are doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? That's them. It says, live such good lives among them that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. What that is saying is, even though they may be against you, don't lose your godliness so that in hopes one day they'll be with you when Jesus returns like this. Hallelujah. In other words, they'll be saved. Amen? Let your good deeds 
I, they will accuse you. They will say you're leaving the family. They will say you're changing uh, denominations. We were raised Catholic. We were raised Baptist. We were raised Methodist. We were raised this way. You shouldn't be doing that because that doesn't look like what we were raised by. You will look weird to them. But your good deeds, if you keep walking in good deeds, I know, I know how you feel. I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. I just feel the Lord is showing. You, you do it in kindness and in love. You will win them over. One day there'll come a time where they see that you conquered something and they can't do it. And they'll come to you and say, how? They'll look for help. They'll ask you for help. Just wait for that day. And you got to be ready to tell them, amen? Because they'll come to you. I promise you, for some of you, that day is coming soon. For some of you, your family members are because you've put in the work already. For some of you in this room, you've already put the work in. You've been putting good deeds. You've already made the change. I promise you, for some of you, you will not be made ashamed. That day is coming where they're going to come to you, and you're going to know it. And you're going to sense it. And on that day, you're going to be on the inside. Woo! But you can't act like a crazy person, you know, because you, you, know, you know what I mean? But on the inside, you're going to be like, this is what I've been praying for. Hallelujah. You understand? Oh, man, I know those feelings. Me and Nina, man, we prayed for certain people, and all of a sudden those people are knocking at our door. And inside we're like, ooh, you know, we want to say, hush, 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 you know. But we got to act normal. You know, come on in, come on in. And when they're passing by, yeah, come on in, sit down, you know what I mean? Oh, man, it's a joyful thing. It's a joyful thing to be that. 13, submit yourselves to the Lord, sake for every authority instituted among men, whether it be king as a supreme authority or the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong, that's police officers and all that, be good, be good with that, don't get wrong with them, and to commend those who do right, for it is God's will that, they, that by doing good you should silence the ignorance talk of foolish men. By doing good, this is maturity, this is maturity. When they speak against you, just silence the mouth. You understand? You're going to talk. Okay, I understand you're going to say that. I understand you're going to say that. That's, hurt. That's hurtful what you said, but God bless you. I love you. I understand. You're angry. It says, verse 16, live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. You know how many Christians are doing that right now? I remember, I, I just never forget it, and I keep saying it over and over again, and I believe the Lord's going to take me deeper into Revelation on it, but I remember one day I said something, Holy Spirit, and Kim shouted out, true salvation. I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and Kim said, true salvation. And I'm telling you something rocked in me because I've lived a time in my life where it was dedicated to Jesus, but I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, my life was all over the place. I was still looking like them out there. But it wasn't until I moved in to understanding and recognizing and talking to the third man. That's when I began to see a change in my life. Because he's the counselor. Do you understand? The more time that I spend with the Holy Spirit, the more time, the more time that I become holy. The Spirit of God is holy. Just spend some time with him, it'll rub off on you, holiness, peculiarness. It'll just rub off on you. Verse 17, show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God and honor the king. I want you to go to verse 9. Look what verse 9 says. Chapter 2, verse 9. I was like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. Verse 19, look what it says. You ready for this? This is going to be hard on you. Ready? This is what today's about. For it is commendable if a man, talking about a man or a woman, if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, it's painful. 
if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God, but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? Question mark. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Man, this is commendable. I commend you, God is saying. In other words, man, I honor you. This is a big deal. Learn how to learn how to bear up the pain of being done wrong. How many of you have been done wrong before? And we've retaliated sometimes. You know what, man? Okay, you did such to me. All right, wait till I expose you. You know what I mean? It's a natural. It's a natural thing. The nature. It's easy to do. But when you walk in maturity as a Christian, when you begin to bear up and endure, they're saying all this stuff, and you know everything they're saying is a lie, but you endure it. You got your faith shield on. And you got to learn how to not let their words get up in here. You understand? You got to let their words roll off the back, as I said, like water off a duck's back, right? They say something, don't listen. Don't listen to it. Just, just watch them. Just watch them, but don't listen to them. Don't let those things get up inside you. That's how you endure it. You let them speak all they want. Don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. Let, don't let it get to you. They're speaking in ignorance. They're speaking in foolishness. They don't know why they're saying that. When you do that, it's commendable to God. It honors God when you and I'm not talking about when they're right. When they're right, go ahead and, you know what I mean, fight it. You know what I mean? If they're right, then, hey, change, man. I, you know, let that devil come out of you. But if they're saying something that is unjust, endure it. Endure it. Don't talk back. Don't bring up their record of wrong. It honors God. And it kills the flesh. Look what it says, verse 21. To this you were called. This type of thinking, you were called to this. This is the calling on your life to be rejected by men, but precious to God. It's your calling. To this, you were called because why? He did it for you. He was rejected, beaten, made fun of, and it says, like a lamb, like a lamb to the slaughter, no sound. He didn't say not one word. It says he could have called all the angels, ah, you know, but he didn't. He was silent. Do you know that silence even put coals on their head? They were angry. But won't you say something? Won't you say, man? They wanted him to say something. No, he be he bore that. His flesh was getting attacked in those moments. His flesh, he knew what they were saying so wrong and so ignorant. I mean, if you know this much revelation, think Jesus who knows all the revelation of the word of God. I could only think how he was thinking, you know, in his flesh, like, God, if only, if you only knew. Oh, if you only knew what y'all were doing. Oh, Father, forgive them. They don't have a clue. And you have to have that higher type of spiritual mentality where you're beyond the fence. You don't get offended by them anymore because you recognize where they're at. Woo. I mean, how many of you get offended by babies? I mean, they kind of get on your nerves. You know what I mean? They kind of get on your nerves, but you don't get offended by them. You understand? Of the mature walk, you have to start recognizing who's a baby and who's a mature person. If they're a baby, that's a baby. Oh, Lord, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Oh, Father, bless them, Lord. They know that, Lord. And you're saying that while, they're, while they, think they're, they think they're so right, you know? 
You may be talking to a 50-year-old, 60-year-old. I'm not, I'm not talking about age. You understand here? I'm talking about people that don't get it, not at where you're at. It honors God to bear up, to bear that. It honors God. Well, you're a holy roller. You act crazy. I ain't trying to act crazy like that. Inside, you're just praying for them. They don't know what they do. See, you have to be, in, you can't be offended by something that you recognize that you're, you're over. Now, some of you be saying, well, you're not supposed to be judging. Oh, no, yes, yes, we do. We do judge. We judge as Christians. We do. You need to. You need to. There are several scriptures there that say that you are in charge. We, we were going to be judging angels one day, it says. It says if we're going to be judging angels one day, the church better get good at judging and understanding what's right and wrong, what to do here and there. You understand? Don't fall under this false doctrine of, of you know, we don't judge any. No, we judge all things, but, but no one judges us. You know, that's what Corinthians says. If you, were, if you came to, you need to come on Wednesday. Some of you are looking at me like, what? <laughs> yes, the, the Bible says in Corinthians, we judge all things, but we are not judged by any. The, our only judge is Jesus, and we already know how he judged it. We, we're judge free, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Now, that doesn't use your freedom to walk in evil, right? Just because you ain't judge, no, you still got to judge over all in all, you understand? He's still seeing everything. But you yourself need to recognize who you're talking to. And my, you need to judge that and say, this is a baby Christian. How can I be offended by a baby Christian? 80-year-old baby Christian. <laughs> You've got to see it that way. Bear up. That's how Jesus was looking at us. Golly, man. Priest and your priesthood and you're doing this. Hanging me on the cross and you're dressed as priest. But didn't say nothing. He bore that. That's precious to God. It gives room for the Holy Spirit to work in people. Because the, you didn't react the way that others normally do. It says, verse 21, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Golly. Isn't that amazing? Let's go to the next chapter, 313. I'm almost done. I'm almost done for some of you that I know some of us got to get places. Verse Peter 313. Right there, just turn the page. Look what it says here. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? That's a question mark. But man, if you do good, most people are going to accept you, right? It says, but, look for the buts in the Bible, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Man, bear it up. I know you look probably like the fool. Bear it up. I know they think that you're the lost one. Bear it up. I know that think that they know more than you and they think they got it better than you and they think that they know the answers for your life. I know that. Bear it up. Bear it up. Bear it. It honors God to do that. Why? Because we know better. We don't argue with ignorance. Don't argue with ignorance. Don't battle back and forth. It'll turn into an Endless quarrel. Endless quarrel. Does that make sense? I mean, just bear it up. Better to honor God by bearing it up. Took the conversation short. You didn't have to take it so far and so long. Does that make sense? Yeah. Waste time. And man, I could have been over here in my bed already lying down. Here I am with this fool just so you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh man, I've learned to just, you know what? Oh, gosh, get me out of here. It's children. They're children. They're children, no matter the age. Do you just go knocking down babies? You know, get out of my way, man. Get out of there. No, no, you take them in. Come here. You know. Well, I hate what you I know. Come here. Just come here. I know. I know you don't understand. <laughs> you understand? You kind of get what I'm saying? Man, bear that stuff up. It honors God, and it's going to mature you. You won't be so loose on your lip anymore. You'll learn how to bridle that tongue like a mature person. You'll learn how to bridle that tongue the way Jesus bridled his tongue when it was time for him to go to the cross. 
When it's time for you to kill the flesh, bridle the tongue. When it's time for you to carry your cross, bridle the tongue. Bridle that tongue. Be like a, like a lamb going to the slaughter. Man, I'm ready. Be like a, a, a Isaac laid himself on the altar. Obedient to the father. You remember that? Abraham and Isaac. It says Abraham took him and he put him on there. And Father, where are we going? Oh, the Lord will supply. And I could see uh, the son laying there like, oh, what are we doing? What's going on here? No, obedient. He knew it. He knew it. He trusted his father. He trusted his father. He laid them and there was the son right there. Oh, it pleased the father to see that. It pleased the father to see Isaac bear that up, to see Abraham bear that up. Oh, it pleased him so much that he put a stop and he said, stop, there's only one that's going to do that. There's only one that's going to shed blood for that kind of sacrifice. And he stopped and he provided another sacrifice in that moment, a ram that was stuck in a tree. He's not going to do it to where you kill yourself. What good are you dead for the Lord? He's not telling you to bear up your cross and go die. He needs you alive here. In other words, the things that you're going to bear up won't lead you right. In, I mean, there'll be a time when there'll be some martyrs, but right now there ain't none of that going on. If anything, people are just going to make fun of you. Bear it up. If anything, people are going to say, when we call you crazy, bear it up. Bear it up. It honors God to do that. It brings you blessing. It says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be frightened. Verse 15, but in your hearts, you see that? Not in your minds, in your hearts. This is where the spirit of God is. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. In other words, you need to always have a reason for someone that's going to come up and start calling you crazy. Why do you act this way? Why do you do that? You need to have a good practice that. Go in the mirror, practice your answer. You understand? Be ready for what you're going to say when people say, when, why, why do you all do that? Why do all? Let me tell you why we do that, you know? Let me tell you what it's done in my life. But do this with gentleness and respect. You know how many times I've seen it where uh, I've seen my own brothers and sisters, they go back, they, they, they keep their Christian self. But then when they go back to those pagans of a family, they just get ridiculous. They lose it. You lose it. I've done that myself. I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't honor God in really being fully submissive. It was too hard for my flesh. And finally I said, man, I'm tired of y'all talking. You know what I mean? Oh, they're not judging me. Y'all don't know the walk I'm going. You know what I mean? And it came out. I didn't do it in gentleness. That didn't honor the Father. It didn't honor the Father in that moment. I lost my moment there. But guess what? There's plenty more. <laughs> Trust me, they ain't going to stop right there. Many more opportunities. Do it in gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that you, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Watch this, 17. It is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Amen? Last scripture, chapter 4. Man, is this speaking to anybody? Man, this is going to mature you up real good. You're going to learn to be sound people. The world won't know what to do with you. They're finally going to yell at you, say something. <laughs> you know, chapter 4, verse 1. Everybody say, therefore. 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 Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body. You hear that? Yeah, your body, that's your flesh. You will suffer. Your flesh will suffer. It wants to do things, and you ain't going to let it. It wants to, eat, it wants to eat things, it wants to drink things, and it wants to receive pleasures of things. And when you cut it off, it acts up. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude. In other words, get in the attitude of continually making your body suffer. Golly. Get into that habit. 
Make the body, whatever the, if the body wants that additional, cut it off. Make it, <laughs> we're drinking water. <laughs> oh, you want to overreact? Guess what? We ain't eating today. We're calling a fast. <laughs> oh, you hungry? You know? We ain't, we ain't eating for another 10 minutes just because you reacted up. I'm telling you, your flesh, it works separate. It's always pulling on you, isn't it? It's always making you do things that you don't want it to do, right? That's because your spirit, man, is the one that's supposed to be in charge. That's why David said to his spirit and his soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He was talking from a third person. Where do you think he was speaking from? He was speaking from his spirit, man, speaking to his soul. Bless the Lord, soul. You ain't running these things. Flesh, you ain't running these things. I'm running it from the third man right here in my center. Amen? That's what's running the show here, not you. Just for that, you ain't eating lunch today. Ooh, that thing will go like that, but your spirit will be like strong. Your body will be like this. You're like, all right, you going to act right? All right, you can have a piece of bread. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, I'm serious, man. This is, stuff is real. I'm not making this up. Watch how your body, and all of a sudden, before you know it, your body's going to be well-trained, doing exactly what it says to do. Oh, yeah, you got to train it up. It's like a baby. I'm almost done. As a result... It says, uh, same at, have the same attitude because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. Two, as a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and all that stuff. They think it's strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to man in regard to the body. Look at that. They'll be judged in regard to the body. Man, that makes the body a very important thing on what kind of judgments we receive, you know? Put that body in check. Bridle that tongue. The, the tongue is part of your body. It's a body part, isn't it? Matter of fact, that tongue right there can either bless or curse. That means there's connection between your body and spiritual things. Many times we speak things against our own selves out of anger, out of, out of just, just being dumb in a moment. And, and, and I've done this so many times, said something. I'm like, why did I say that? It's a spiritual thing. Your tongue is a spiritual thing. It can speak curses on you or on someone, or it can speak the word of God, blessing on you or on someone. Be a mature person that knows how to bridle the body. Does that make sense? Practice it this week and watch how in time you will notice yourself getting mature and you'll have a sound mind because the mind won't no, nowhere near start to think that it needs to come up with things to bring an accusation. It just shuts down because you don't use that part of your mind anymore. Does that make sense? I mean, I used to tell my wife, she's, she's still good every now and then. She's better than me, you know, doing cut downs. You remember back in the day we used to do that? Like, we used to try to cut down who could do the best, you know, come back with something. Oh, you got me. I, I don't know what to say no more, you know. Yeah. My wife's the best. Y'all can't take her, man. I'm telling you right now. But I wasn't never no good at it. And you know what? Because I felt like I wasn't no good at it, I left it. And because I left it, it never advanced that part of me. So you know what I do? I just stay quiet. Little did I know it was going to bring me another kind of blessing. Amen? <coughs> Just learn to bridle that tongue. Amen? Yeah. Learn to mature. Move on. Move on into maturity. This is the call over your lives. It says, it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Amen? Yeah. Amen. That bless anybody? Yeah.
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I love the word of God. I love it today. You know, I was like, Lord, what do we do? You know, let's just read some word. Amen. You know, that's what we just did, right? Man, we just read some word just all the way through. Godly. Simple as that. I declare that your tongues be bridled starting today. I declare that your tongues be bridled today in the name of Jesus. For some of you, the flesh is, gets a little wild in some areas. I declare that today that flesh is going to be stopped today by your spirit man in the name of Jesus. For some of you, it's been getting out of hand and you've been going back and forth saying, Lord, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. And I'm telling you right now, if all sin came through the eating, almost convinced that you can eradicate it by stopping the eating of food. I'm talking about fasting. I remember a young man came up to me and he said, I have a pornography problem. And I said, oh, I have your answer. Because pornography is a big deal with men nowadays. I was introduced to pornography when I was 10 years old. You don't just get rid of stuff like that. You know what I mean? I remember the Lord taught me how to do that. And I told him, I have your answer. And he just looked at me. I said, fast. Because all the body is, is it's used to getting what it wants. It's a spiritual thing. You have a pornography problem? The Lord showed me a fast. When you fast, the body goes weak. Take food away from the body, it don't care about sex. It wants to eat You understand? It knows that's the source of the problem. You understand? I'm speaking adult maturity. You want to conquer those kinds of you have an issue, you have an issue where your body's leading you astray fast. Because you're taking the very thing that it knows it has to live by. And it puts it in check real quick. Okay, okay. Let's just eat. No, no, we're gonna go one more. Let's just eat. No, we're gonna go one more to do it right. You understand? It puts the body in check. It does that fast. I'm giving you the answer right here. I'm giving you the answer. Some of you needed this answer. I'm giving you this answer. This is the way you kill the flesh. You fast. All of those sins are the evil desires of the flesh. If you just fa fast, man. Take away where it knows that it needs to survive. And I'm telling you, it'd be like a little kid. Okay, I'll do right, I'll do right. And you'll be running the show as a spirit man. Fast. When it acts up again, you just messed up. We're fasting again. The body, it's, it's different from your spirit. It's not connected. That's why you're going to do away with it one day. You don't need that body to survive. It's your spirit man that's surviving. Do you understand? The body is almost like the ball and chain. It's, it's some other relationship that doesn't fail because of someone else, but one day I'm going to get rid of you. You understand? The body's like that third ball and chain, that relationship. Yeah, man, I got this thing with me. That's all right, though. I'm dragging him. Yeah, yeah, I got this flesh with me. I know he's stuck with me, but one day we're going to be cut off when Jesus returns. Yeah, you just, you just follow me. You understand? Put the flesh in check. Fast, I'm telling you. You fast that put that body. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I just spoke some things right there, Father. And I pray that obedience come, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that fasting, Father, turn into praying, Father. And praying, Father, turn into answered prayers in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, I declare, Father, some of you, some of you today, I declare a fast over your lives. Hallelujah. The Lord told me to tell you, you do a fast today, I'll get rid of it. You start a fast, I'll get rid of it. I can just hear the Lord saying that. Start fasting over that situation, I'll get rid of it. I'll get rid of it. You watch. You watch what happens. It pleases the Father. It pleases the Father. When you kill the flesh, it's precious to God. I pray over your lives that you take those next steps of faith. You take those next steps of maturity. 
so we can move on into bigger and better things. Hallelujah. Bigger and better things for your lives. Father, I thank you for every person here, Father. I'm not speaking anything that I have not gone through myself. I've been in all kinds of errors and sins. And I thank God because he led me out of it. Piece by piece by piece. Led me out of it. Father, I pray that you lead some of my fellow brothers and sisters that are maybe in captive in a certain area of their life. I pray that you kindly guide them out to freedom. Man, I'm talking to some. All you have to do is stretch your hand out and say, Lord, I'll follow you. Show me the way out. Show me the way out. There's a door somewhere around here. I can't see it, Father. There's a door to victory in this area of my life, and I can't see it. But if I reach out my hand, I know you'll take it, Father, and you'll show me the way out to freedom, Lord. I know you'll do it, Father. You did it for me. You'll do it for anybody else here did it for me, you'll do it for anybody else here, Father. For you are not a respecter of persons, Lord. Father, I thank you for every person here, Father. I bless them, Father, as we move on into more mature living, Lord. Oh, and we'll see some beautiful things come out of this, Father. Oh, hallelujah, I can see it now. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, amen. 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 amen? Let's say it one more time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. You're all dismissed. The Holy Spirit, he's done minister to all of us. Amen. Amen. You got some things? Come on up here. Can you? So in front of your benches, you got something you want to write for. You don't have to write your name or anything on it if you don't want to. But we'll raise it up in prayer. Amen. We're turning into a praying church. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. We're dismissed. Amen. God bless you.